you would turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 7. <clears throat> I'll talk to you a little bit this morning about the uh, centurion and uh, his faith. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, for Larry talk some on the, uh, some of these uh, verses, uh, either here or in Matthew 1. But uh, I want to want to bring some things out that uh, I've got a blessing out of study and uh, we do hope that this will be a blessing to you uh, I think it I think that it tells us some things that really that uh, we read over so many times that we don't uh, grasp and I, I see every once in a while that's where that's where the blessing comes from a lot of times is Amen. we read and we read and we read and we just slide right over it and then all of a sudden one day what I the Lord uh, Let's just be lowered down a little bit before we get into it. And uh, we're just amazed at why we hadn't seen this or why the, uh, uh, that somebody hadn't seen it. But uh, I want to read it to you and you can uh, maybe get a, a little from it. But in verse 1 of chapter 7 of the book of Luke, Now when he had ended all of his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Pernium. A certain centurion, a servant who Who's, who was a, and a certain centurion servant who was near unto the, him was sick and ready to die. When he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him and instantly saying that he was worthy for whom he had, for he was worthy of, for whom he should do this. For he, for he loved our nations, and he had built us a synagogue. Then, Jew, then Jesus went with them, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion, his friend, <clears throat> and when he was now not far from the house, the centurions sent friends to him, saying, unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say it in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servants do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we see here that this centurion is a is a Roman officer, and the century means a hundred, and they call them centurions because they were over as many as a hundred people, and he had also a servants that were serving him and he was concerned about this the servant and uh he it says here that and when he heard jesus when he and when he heard of jesus so this was a new thing to him evidently because he hadn't probably hadn't heard this before but when he had heard of jesus so we we see that the centurion uh got some good news about the healings that jesus had done and uh, we'll see it here a little bit later on some of the other things that Jesus did to, to that he could have heard. But uh, he was he was he was uh, amazed at this. He was he was uh, uh, glad to hear this thing because his servant was sick. So we see here that the uh, the, the uh, centurion uh, servant was dear to him and uh, was sick and was ready to die. And when Jesus, and when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his service. Now, here we see the Jews, the Jewish elders, and of course, Rome, uh, the centurion was a Roman, and so evidently Rome had uh, had authority over them. But he sent these sent these. Uh, uh, these Jewish people, uh, the elders, or which were, I'm assuming, preachers, to Jesus to ask him to come and heal. And so 
we see here that that the when when they came, this is something I want you to understand and see. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servants. Now, these servants came to him and they were obeying what he had said. And notice what they said. And when they come came to Je when, and when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this thing. And this this morning to me is something that we as church people, as as Christians, we do not do it as much as we should, and I've, 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 I've hit on this and hit on this, but listen, they came there and they were Jews, mm -hmm. and they were not really in love with the Romans because the Romans were there uh, overseeing them. But here's what they said. They said here uh, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. In other words, they were, they were saying this centurion is a good man. Mm -hmm. And we this morning as God's people should, when we come to the Lord, we should call people by name and say, Hey, Amen. I want you to bless brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or a church that we uh, uh, a fellowship with or whatever. But we need, to, we need to come before God and, you know, ask His blessings. And we this morning... They come face to face with this with Jesus, and they said, "Now he's a good man." Right. And listen, people, I've got problems, and you've got problems, and we've all got problems, and we need to share our problems with our brothers and our sisters. And that's not well. If you, if you think about it, pray for me. Yeah, I'll pray for you. That's not what we need to do. We need to be more sincere about these problems yeah. that we have in body, in spirit, or whatever. And we need to, if, if, I, if I've got a problem and, and I feel like that uh, I can come to Brother Larry and say, Brother Larry, I want you to pray with me or I want you to pray for me that I can have a better feeling body or a, a better attitude towards my brothers and sisters in the church or whatever. Uh, you know, we have, we have wives at home. We have husbands at home. Do we... Do we come to them and say, uh, "Honey, would you would you uh, pray for me?" Mm -hmm. and, and you say, you say, "Well, I know she's praying for me, or I know he's praying for me." But listen, that's not it. Right. We need to make it known that we want this prayer to go on in our lives and to uh, uh, to be closer to him because they they come up and said, "Hey, he's worthy of it." And listen, uh, I might not be able to reach the Lord. Like I, I need, but Diane might be able to. Right. And if I if I say Diane, I need I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me. And 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 and, she, and, and the other hand, she said, and I need you to pray for me. And me, it's sincerely. Listen, he Jesus might or God might answer that problem or that prayer for her uh, about me. And and, and, and and it would be a it would be a greater blessing because listen, if she's praying for me and I'm praying for her and I see something happen in her life that I know that God has blessed her with, or she sees it in me, listen, what a what a blessing it would be. Amen. And that's that's this morning with everybody here. We need to we need to have a little chats with our spouses and say, Hey, I you know, I I need you to pray for me because yeah. who do you, I mean? If there's anybody that you should be more concerned about than anybody is is your wife or your husband, right? And and you ought to be concerned about yourself to the point that you would ask ask them, hey, pray for me. And the church, listen, I you know you, we need to come to the church. As a and, and, and as a whole group, and say, "Hey, I need your prayers," and not not this way. Well, I pray for you, I pray. but listen. Be concerned about it because you would be concerned about one of your loved ones, real close loved ones, fleshly uh, kin folks, 
and if they was laying there with some kind of bad disease, you would get closer to the Lord and you would pray a better pray to prayer than you would be for, you know, somebody, well, I wish you'd pray for me sometime and you get a chance. Well, hey, listen, that goes in one ear and not the other. Most right. Of and so here, here, this centurion, this centurion sent them there and listen, they didn't come there and say, well, if you feel like it, if you want to, or he, he's, he's, he's sort of, you know, he's sort of over you a little bit, but listen, they come to him and they said, for he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Very important to the Jew was to have their place of worship. And when one got tore down like theirs did, and he built them another one, they were uh, more in love with him. And, and notice here he says uh, he, and that, he, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. And so they were getting... They were getting a blessing by telling Jesus the good things about the, the centurion. And Jesus understood more closely because he had he felt closer to the Jews. So there was there was a thing going on there. And so what did he say? He said, Then Jesus went with them. He didn't say, I when I can, or maybe, or whatever, but he went with them. Right. And listen. When you get that close, when you get that close to Jesus, and when you get concerned about one of your loved ones, about one of your friends, and you can you can get that close, listen, you can move mountains. And that's what the Bible says. You can move mountains. And so listen, here he says, Then Jesus went with them, and when he was not was now not far from the house, this tells you about the centurion. The centurion sent friends. Again, Hey, who's he sending? He's sending friends. He's sending them to them, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. Said, you, you, you know, don't trouble yourself over this. Because, listen, I understand you are, uh, you're far above me. But he said, trouble not yourself, uh, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. So we this morning as, as, as children of God, <clears throat> that's where we need to be put. That's where we need to put ourselves and, and stay right there at the feet of Jesus and say, hey, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, but the thing of it is, I know you can do it. I know, I know, I know what you can do, Lord Jesus, and I, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm trusting you to do this thing. And so here he says here, notice here, <clears throat> Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servants shall be healed. So he said, I, I, I wasn't worthy, but you can just say the word, and they'll be healed. Because he had heard about Jesus, and so I want to I want to show you something here about this this authority that Jesus and this man is talking about. For in verse eight, he says, "For I am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto them." Unto one go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servants do this, and he do that. And he's saying, hey, Jesus, I know that you can say the word, and he'll be, he'll be healed. Now, in the, in the, in the scriptures, and I, 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 I jotted down a little thing here I want you to uh, think about with me. In Matthew 8, and it, 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 don't, it don't sound like it would apply, but it does. I believe. Matthew 8 and 28. Matthew 8 and 28. Let me find it. Okay. Matthew 8, 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gershians, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Now these that were crying out were devils. And to show you the authority that this man is talking about is nothing compared to what Jesus had as, in, 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 as his authority. Amen. And, and he says here, uh, 
Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good ways off from them a herd of many swine feeding. But, so the devils besought or bade him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. Now all in this world that Jesus had to do to come to that uh, man's house, centurion's house, is to say, Go. Uh, he could have said disease, go from the man. He could have said whatever. But he that's all he had to say here. Said he says, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine went violently down a steep place to the sea and perished in the water. And so I wanted to read that in order to tell you this thing with authority. And Jesus has the authority over every devil, every Everything that exists, He has the authority over it because He is God's Son and He is the perfect one and He can say, be healed and you'll be healed or He can say, wait a while and you'll wait a while right. or He can say, I don't want to hear... In other words, I, I would appreciate if somebody else prayed for you. And I believe this, people. I believe this because, listen, what he's doing, he's glorif He's getting the glory out of it. When, when he lets somebody else pray for you and it happens, then that person knows that you have got a blessing and that they have reached the Lord and the Lord is pleased with them praying. You may see what I'm saying? So it's important this morning. It's important. It's very important this morning for us to pray for one another. Okay, so now, in verse uh, 8, uh, for verse 8, he says, For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto you, a one, go and he goeth, and this is his authority, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my service do this, and, do, and he doeth. But here, he says here, and when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Amen. Now, we have that authority, people. We, as God's people, have the same authority that that man is talking about, talking to, uh, about, uh, he tells them to do this or do that, because listen, we have a brother that knows our Father face to face. He's sitting right there at the throne talking to Him. And all we have to do is come to Him and ask Him and, and ask other people to ask Him. And listen, He will do these Amen. things. He will do these things. We have this, this special plan here. And so, uh, speaking of uh, in, in, uh, and we can do this in Malachi 3.10. You know where it says he's talking about tithing and, and, and that it will uh, pour, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. What does he say? He says, prove me. Right. Prove me. And that's what this morning, that's what this morning is we need to do. We need to prove Jesus, and that's not saying, that's not putting us above Him or nothing, but He says, prove me. In other words, you try this thing. You try this on, and if it fits, you wear it. And because it's something this morning that will get us through the rough spots. It's something this morning that will get us out of the hospital beds. It's something that will, will carry us on, and it will make us rejoice. Even if we do have the pain, it will you 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 prove the Lord, and and that's this morning. I believe that's what Jesus meant when he said, "Prove me," and and he he used it with putting the tithe in the church. And listen, people, if there ever was anything that I have tried him with, is the tithe, and I know what he does, and I know that that he shows me, hey what he said to Malachi in Malachi. You, Amen. you do this and I'll pour you out a blessing. And listen, you don't see me running around with a bank full of money and, and uh, uh, fine linens and all this stuff. Listen, I've got the assurance that I'm in the will of the Lord. Amen. And people, 
There ain't nothing, there's nothing no richer than to have the assurance that you're in the will of the Lord. And so, here again, I want you to, I want to read you something else, if I can find it, in just a minute here in Luke. I believe it's in Luke 4. Luke. Luke 4 and uh, uh, 16. Look at Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed, has known in me. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and to recover of sight to the blind. He set at liberty them that, that, that are bruised to preach the accepted word, year of the word, the year of the Lord. Now here's what I want you to see. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all of them were in, uh, that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. So here he's saying what he's done, what he's doing. He has he has preached the gospel. He has delivered them. He has uh, give sight to the blind. And notice what he said. And he sat down. Now it's the same thing that happened when Jesus Christ left this world. He had preached the gospel. He had he had told the people. Uh, he had he had made a church, and he had done all these things. And then what did he do? He after after his death, he arose and went to the Father, and he sat there, and he's there with him today, sitting in front of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. And listen, that is a very important this morning that we realize. That that's what happened. Now, in uh, uh, in in one of my other place there in Luke 33, 433, notice 33, I believe it is, yeah. And in the synagogue there was, was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? That Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when he, the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this with what authority, with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirit to come out of him. So again, there is your authority in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I've showed you here this morning what He has done. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And so He did all of these things. He ascended to the, to the Father. He's sitting there this morning. Listen. He's sitting there this morning and He's waiting. He's waiting for you and for me and for all of us to make our uh, 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 request to Him. And people, he will, he will not fail us. He will not fail us. And we, as God's people, he has joined the Father, and and he is ready. And and we, as God's people, need to join one another and make our 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 wants known uh, in a way of prayer to one another. We need to not pray to one another, but we need to tell each other our problems. Right, and people. If you do it, and you do it, and you do it, listen, and I know sometimes we, we hate to say, uh, honey, I need you to pray for me. Uh, you know, it, it well, how what's she going to think about this? But listen, that's the way it's done. Right. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be done. That's the reason why, if you think when you said, I do, you became one. 
And listen, you can talk, you can talk to your wife, you can talk to your husband, or you should be able to. And if you don't, then there needs to be something. If you can't, you need to pray for her that you can. And if she she needs to pray for her that you can. It, it, it's, a, it's, a one, one thing, it's a thing that we need to get together on. And it's just like in the church here, we need to be in one accord. Amen. Because, listen, we are a church. We are one. And we, when we pray, we need to have the authority by being uh, in one accord and that we can get to Jesus and He can hear the prayer for the church. Because uh, that's what we're here for. Amen. That's, 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 that's our reason for being here. Uh, is to serve God. And we cannot serve Him unless we're in accord. We cannot, we cannot come, we cannot come to this church in an attitude that we hate the world. We cannot do it and be in fellowship with the Lord. It just don't happen. And people I know by myself, I have got out of the will of the Lord and tried to come to church and try to lead songs and stuff like that. And everything just a sour note. Listen, you've got to be in, in one accord. So that's that's our lesson for today. And, uh, uh, that's, our, that's what I wanted to tell you all. And uh, uh, try it. Like I said, try it. And if, uh, uh, if it don't work, well, tell me. But I tell you what, you need to try it. Because uh, uh, you, you just don't realize what kind of a blessing you're missing. Right. Thank you all for listening.